Cash management in Africa presents treasurers with complex challenges, such as navigating different political dispositions, country macroeconomics, currency regimes and regulations. Not to mention the difficulty of working with imperfect market data. That's right. But at the same time, the continent also offers exciting opportunities to solve, simplify, digitize and reinvent treasury functions. Ratu de Mendonca is the group head of sales and financial institutions, transaction bank banking at Standard Bank Group. He joins us now to look at some of these challenges and opportunities. Ratu, thank you so much for taking the time. It's an absolute pleasure and I'd like to thank Sabos uh, for having me today. Delighted to be in Toronto, Sabos 2023. Ratu, another Sabos, another busy year, no doubt. Please start by giving us this a high level flavor of the corporate cash management landscape on the African continent at the moment. Johnny, you and Janela uh, painted the picture beautifully but I'd like to enrich that picture of complexity on the African continent. So we're dealing with a beautiful con uh, continent which has 54 countries within it, uh, 42 currencies that are traded on the continent. We've got between 1,000 to 2,000 languages spoken on the African continent. And of those languages, about 75 are spoken by a million plus people. So if you layer that complexity onto the picture that you painted, you can understand uh, the challenge that lies ahead for corporate treasures on the African continent. Mm. And, and talking about that, that complex landscape, how do corporate treasures then go about uh, setting out strategies to manage uh, the, all of the different types of risks that are changes, changing and sometimes on a daily basis? Absolutely. You've got to go back to basics. So when you're dealing with complexity, uh, you need to deconstruct that complexity and you start at the basics. So first of all, the composition of the portfolio of countries that a corporate treasurer has to deal with is the starting point. Um, at times, there are opportunities to inject efficiencies into the corporate treasury function. For example, where perhaps the mix of countries that a corporate treasurer has to deal with lends itself to simplification of liquidity management. And what I mean by that is, for example, the portfolio of countries may be a mix where very few or no exchange controls exist. So therein lies an immediate opportunity to sweep uh, cash to a centralized location. And we have many examples of those countries, countries like Uganda, Zambia, Botswana, Mauritius are exchange control free. Then you have the opposite extreme where there are extreme uh, or high layers of exchange controls. Couple that with low availability of FX liquidity, um, disparate interest rate markets. So in that scenario, if a corporate treasurer has a mix of countries that looks like that, then the approach to treasury is very different. So the opportunity to centralize uh, diminishes because you need hands on the ground, feet on the ground to deal with the last nine yards of complexity. And then you need a overarching risk management framework that lends itself to nimbleness, uh, flexibility, um, uh, dynamic decision making, because you're right, Janela, the markets are changing every day. Uh, the regulations are ever evolving. Um, and so that high degree of dynamism from a, a treasury is required. So to centralize or not to centralize is, is a big question, I guess. How do corporate multinationals operating on the African continent think about the perpetual dilemma that comes across of whether to centralize or to decentralize their, their treasury functions? Johnny, what a conundrum. And there's no right or wrong. So I go back to my basics point. Look at the portfolio of country and decide whether centralization to a degree uh, makes sense. Centralization in certain components of the treasury value chain might work. For example, the execution of foreign exchange transactions, the deals, the hedging program. That for global multinationals might uh, make sense to centralize at the global treasury center or the global shared services center. However, when it comes to perhaps a different facet of treasury management, which is the daily liquidity management, i.e. the corporate treasurer's ability to keep the finger on the pulse of daily cash flow intraday overnight, that is more difficult to centralize because you need to be uh, monitoring those, those cash dynamics uh, intraday, speaking to your bankers, speaking to your clients, speaking to your suppliers, 
and anticipating those cash, cash flow uh, movements uh, on an intraday basis. So the relevance of banks to corporate treasuries uh, is evolving, uh, no less so than on the African continent. And if banks are to keep pace with the fast changing needs of corporate treasuries, what do they need to do? Banks need to stay close to their clients, understand the makeup of their clients. Uh, we think of different segments of clients. We've got large domestic African corporates emerging. They themselves are becoming complex organizations as they build new pillars of their business and they go into different geographies. We've got African regional multinationals, the south going north, the east going you know, west, west going east, and so forth. And then we've got the global multinationals who have operations or investment activities on the continent. Now, each three of those, let's call it sub-segments of clients, have different needs. But when all is said and done, banks need to stay close to clients, understand the day-to-day -day needs of their clients, and equally solve for the last nine yards for clients on the African continent. They, that is probably one of the most important solutioning dimensions that banks have, or responsibilities that banks have uh, to clients. And interestingly enough, as I spend time on the African continent, and I look at uh, the large domestic and the large regional African banks, I'm perpetually uh, pleased and excited to see their ability to solution mm. on the continent. They don't do it on themselves. They, of course, partner with fintechs. And many of those fintechs themselves are African grown. Um, and so they truly understand the nuances of solving for those nine, last nine yards. Mm. Now, much has, uh, much has been said and written about fully fledged digital treasuries at the moment. Is this concept perhaps too early for African corporate treasuries, uh, would you say? Yes and no. So the utopia of a digital treasury is still a concept that is being pursued, uh, not only on the African continent, by, but by global treasures of the most sophisticated global multinationals. But it can be solved for in component parts. So for example, the ability to execute foreign exchange transactions digitally is available. So even in a continent where you've got this plethora of currencies, there are available platforms uh, that offer pricing uh, and where the digital execution can occur. Uh, the second component is where, and I'll, I'll refer to the Africa continental uh, trade uh, area, free trade area, which uh, most countries have now ratified. Um, that creates a new opportunity for digitization on the trade, cross-border trade front. So for example, as volumes of intra-Africa trade increase, so it strengthens the domestic corporates, it strengthens the regional corporates that are operating on the continent, and therein lies the opportunity to digitize intra-Africa on both sides of those trade transactions. Um, single view of liquidity. So again, you'll say to me, Ratu, what are you thinking when you suggest that we might be able to get to the utopia of a single view of liquidity across multiple markets? Now, as long as banks are subscribers to SWIFT and lots of SWIFT discussions happening this week, banks have got the ability to give one another views, intraday, timestamp views, overnight views, weekly views of liquidity sitting in clients' accounts. And if those views are directed to a single consolidating bank that can display that view in a singular fashion, there's your next step. So in small component parts, step by step. Well, African corporate treasuries uh, certainly as fascinating in their complexities as ever. Thank you so much for joining us on Cybers TV at Cybers 2023 to fill us in on it. Uh, Ratu Dimandonsa, Group Head, Sales and Financial Institutions, Transaction Banking at Standard Bank Group. Thank you again. And we'll see you next year, I guess. Looking forward to it. And it's been my absolute pleasure. Thanks. Have a, have a great week. Thank you.